from the dead. What's interesting about that is in John chapter 10 and verse number 10, the Bible says that a thief is only there to steal something, kill something, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came so that they can have real and eternal life, more and better life than they ever dreamed of. Amen. Jesus, the reason why he came was so that you could have a better life. But if life and death was just left to faith, that it happens no matter what we want or how we resist, if life and death is just simply left to faith, then it doesn't matter what you choose or what you want to happen or what you don't want to happen. But no, Jesus said, I came so that you could have life, even though there's one that wants you to experience death. I came, the reason why I left the glory and the splendor of heaven was to come to earth so that you can have a better life than you've ever dreamed of. Amen. Amen. So we can see that the same way, that Easter is a matter of life and death. And when we choose Jesus, inevitably we are choosing life. We are making the right choice. We are choosing better. Then also at the resurrection, in Matthew chapter 28 and verse number 18, I want to remind you of something. Right after Jesus was raised from the dead, the Bible says that he called his disciples. This is right before he ascends to heaven. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. He says, go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I want you to notice that Jesus said in verse 18, I've got all authority now. In heaven and in earth. It's not just he has the authority in heaven. But because he went to the grave and defeated Satan in hell. Yeah. How many of y'all know Jesus did go to hell for you? Yeah. So that you don't have to go there. Because he went to hell for you and defeated Satan, now not only does he have all authority in heaven, he also now has all authority on earth. Amen. And that's important. Because this emphasizes again that life and death for the Christian is a matter of choice. It's not a matter of chance. I'm not worried about going out of here today and suddenly dying in a car wreck. Why? Because I have a choice in the matter. Oh, it gets quiet. Amen. Because some have the idea that, that certain things are beyond your control. That the things that we experience in life and in relationships, whether it be financially or even physically, are a matter of fate. And that's not the kind of God that we served. That things are left just simply to chance. That it might be that I live a long life or it might be that I die at an early age and that I have no, um, no, no contribution to the outcome and the experience of life. It's just left to chance, to something beyond my control. And then surely things happen that we don't want to happen, and we think that even God is involved with the bad things that happen in our lives. Friend, nothing could be further from the truth. Man. He has set before us life and death, blessing and cursing good and evil. And then he says, the choice is up to you. Choose life. So Jesus clearly came so that we could have life and have it more abundantly, have better life. But then also before he left, he said, I have all authority in heaven and on earth, and I want you to go as a result of my authority. In other words, you have now been deputized. Yes. All right. I'm going to date myself. When I grew up, there was a cartoon called, uh, well, it was one of the characters in the cartoon, Deputy Dog. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. I see if you face it, you recognize that you kind of date yourself too. <laughs> some, some people don't have a clue about Deputy Dog. 
Well, as it is, you know, we're, we're in a county where we've got sheriff's officers, so forth and so on. When I grew up, I was in the city. They just had police officers. I moved to Texas. Now they got a sheriff in town. <laughs> and the officers are actually called deputies because they have been deputized with the same authority as the sheriff. They can go about and execute their responsibility in this life according to the authority that's been invested in them. Yes. What I want to share with you, just simply from the word of God, is that he deputized you at that moment. And he said, because I now have authority and because you have chosen me, I want you to function in my authority in this life. That puts you in that driver's position of being able to choose life and blessing and good. In the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse number 18, this is also good to note. The Bible says, well, Jesus said, he appeared to John at the Isle of Patmos, and he said to John, I am he who lives and was dead and behold, which means, look, I am alive forevermore. Amen. He said, amen, in his own preaching. <laughs> and he said, and I have the keys of Hades, which is hell, and I have the keys of death. What am I saying to you? Oh, absolutely. Jesus has all authority. Yes. When you have all authority, that means there's not anything left over. Amen. amen. When you have all authority, you have every form of authority there is. And he says, not only that, I have all authority in heaven and in earth. And now we see he has even authority over hell and he has authority over death. And because he has authority over hell and has authority over death, you and I also have authority over hell and have authority over death. Amen. That's good. And that's God. That means there's no form of hell that could show up in your home that you have to stand for or allow. That means there's no form of death that could show up in your life, in your finances, in your marriage, in your body that you have to stand for. You can put your foot down, hallelujah, and declare in the name of Jesus, I have authority over hell and the death. Hebrews chapter 2. I'm just setting you up to understand that life and death is a matter of choice. There was a burden in my heart that came, especially as it relates to marriages. Did you know that divorce is the death of a marriage? It's real. And if you've ever experienced it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And in reality, it's a choice. You can choose to go through that door if you want to. God doesn't force you. You don't have to stay in that marriage. He hates divorce. But he made you a free moral agent. Yes. And you can do in this life what you want to. Yes. But he urges you to make the right choices in life. As a married person, as an unmarried person, come on, yeah. in every area of life, the choice is yours. It's a matter of life and death. Notice what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14. He says here, inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise, likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is, the devil. I want to pause right there because I, I, I just said a, a mouthful. I don't know if you really understand what we just read in this verse. Please let me help you. He's talking to a group. He's talking about a person. He's saying, inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood. Well, first we would have to know who are the children are. What do you mean that they've partaken of flesh and blood? Does that mean they ate a steak and potato dinner? <laughs> what do you mean that the children have partaken of flesh and blood? Well, if you look at the context, he's really talking about the children of God. Amen. Amen. And, and he's talking about then you and I. And you and I are partakers of flesh and blood. We are children of God. We have physical flesh and blood bodies. Yes. Now watch this. He says, and likewise, in the same way that the children have 
been partakers of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same. In the same what? As a partaker of flesh and blood. You'll notice that he and himself is capitalized because this verse is absolutely referring to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now look at me for a moment. Jesus is a partaker of flesh and blood. The Holy Spirit is not a partaker of flesh and blood. The Holy Spirit is the third person in the Godhead. He is a spirit being. Amen. But what makes Jesus unique is that he became flesh and dwelt among us. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And literally, John chapter 1, he goes on to say that the word was made flesh and walked among us. And we beheld his glory as the only begotten son of God. Amen. So this verse is absolutely talking about Jesus. Jesus walked in a physical body. Well, if you go back and you look at, well, why did he came? John 10, 10 said, I came that you might have life. Why did he come and wrap himself in a flesh and blood body? It was to give you the opportunity to choose life over death. Amen. And this passage absolutely echoes that. So now that we know who we're talking about, let's find out what is he talking about. When as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, so that through death, through dying on the cross, he might destroy him who had the power of death. That is the devil. <coughs> oh man, this is almost po too powerful for me to preach. Amen. But it's so important for you to understand it. I, I believe in reading with comprehension. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so check this out. Jesus came in the flesh so that he can destroy the devil's power over your life. If you've ever experienced an addiction, that is a real powerful influence over your life. In other words, you feel like you've got to do this and you can't control it. In relationships, there's things that you feel like you got to do that you can't control. In life and physically, like with certain sicknesses and diseases, that if this thing takes its course, then I won't be able to do this and I won't be able to do that. And if it ultimately takes its course, it could even lead me to an early grave. Well, that thing does not have that kind of authority yeah. over your life. Yeah. Why? Because of what Jesus did. Yes. Amen. It may look like, I like that song, it may look like, come on, it may look like this is the way it's always going to be. It may look like you have no choice in the matter. Yes. But I'm telling you, according to what God says, yes. happiness in life is up to you. Amen. It's not up to the person you're married to. Right. Yes. Amen. Amen. I know they say happy life, happy wife, but that ain't in the box. Right. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to be happy whether she happy or not. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Don't cut me off. I'm going to talk to you after church. <laughs> Even in a bad situation. situation. Yeah. That question came up so strong in my heart for someone here. I, I knew I was supposed to talk about a matter of life and death and that it's a matter of choice. But the question came, can you be happy in a bad situation? Yes. Please note, before you answer that question, that love will never leave you in a bad situation. That ought to immediately set the bar to what that answer is going to be. Because if I know that I'm not going to be stuck here, that I won't have to live the rest of my life like this, that this is not my end, that this is my moment, that I might be walking through the valley of the shadow of death, but I don't stay here. Then that helps me to be able to answer, can I be happy 
in a bad situation. Somebody say the choice is yours. In the book of Philippians chapter 1. Oh, I missed that. Can you go back to that? I would love to share. So we dealt with verse 14. So that through death, Jesus might destroy him that has the power of death, that is the devil. And verse 15, the second thing he came to do was to release those who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. First of all, Satan had the power of death. He doesn't have it anymore. Amen. Jesus took those keys yes. of death Amen. and hell. Amen. So he can't just do in your life what he wants to do. You have a choice of whether you accept it or reject it. When the doctor says you have this condition and you'll be stuck with it for the rest of your life, you can accept it or reject it. Come on, somebody. And I know what I'm talking about. Man, I got some good news. Two years ago, and I'm just going to take this moment to share my testimony. Everybody's sharing a testimony. I'm going to share my testimony today. Two years ago, I went to the doctor right before I was going on a cruise. My wife needed to go, on a, uh, uh, go to the doctor before she went on a cruise because she was pregnant at the time. So we both just did our annual physical. Well, sure enough, I went in. I thought I was in good shape, you know. But the doctor said I was obese. I was 239 pounds at the time. Amen. And, but I, I carried it well, you know. <laughs> you tell your own story. <laughs> so, so when he says, you know, you're obese, you're, you're looking at high blood pressure, and you need to lose some weight. And, and, and I said, okay, well, you know, he, he, he had it already set. You know, and you get on high blood pressure medicine, you, well, you're supposed to be on that for the rest of your life. I said, well, well what do I need to do? He said, you need to exercise, lose weight, lose weight, and cut certain things out of your diet. Well, I began to, I got on a serious plan. I mean, I knocked it down, went back to set. The, the next year, I was still obese on the charts. Again, the charts, I don't know who, what human they used to make those charts, but I was still, I had lost 20 pounds a year ago, which was uh, after a year of working on it. And they said, well, you still need to lose some more weight. I just went on Friday. The doctor says you do not need high blood pressure medicine. Yes. I have no prescription medicine that I have to take. And to God is be the Lord. Amen. Amen. You say, well, why? Because you have a choice. Yes. And I made a spiritual choice yes. to resist sickness, yes. which is a ramification of death, yes. to resist disease. Yes. Right? And I also made a choice to resist fried foods. Can you pull it down? In the book of Philippians, chapter 1. Just take the phone and stuff. Paul said, I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through the prayer and supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. He said, according to my earnest expectation and hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit from my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I cannot tell. This is an amazing passage of scripture that proves once again that life and death is a matter of choice. Some people believe that, well, it just, not, just must not be your time to die. But when it's your time to die, you will die. There's some people that believe that. But the choice of living and dying is up to you. Someone said that you should live until you're satisfied. Many of the older saints, you know, Isaac for one, and, you know, different ones, Jacob, they would live a long life and then when they decided, they would call their children together and bless them and then they would depart. 
The psalmist said in Psalm 91, with long life, you will satisfy me and show me your salvation. Am I preaching the word of God? To you? Amen. That means you have a choice on this life, in this life to live and to die. You can choose how long you want to stay. It's not determined by some calendar set up in heaven on when you live and when you die. Amen. I know that it goes against a lot of people's theology, but yes. I'm going to stay with it until you get it. <laughs> because he said, think about what he said. I, this is God speaking, set before you the choice to choose life or to choose death. Paul was in a bad situation, facing death. He didn't know how this situation was going to end for him physically, but he knew how it was going to end for him spiritually. Why? Because he chose life even in the face of death. Yes. Can you be happy in a bad situation? He is a perfect example. He was in a bad situation, but because people were praying for him, he knew it was going to turn out for his deliverance. And because he had faith and expectation that God was going to come through and not leave him in a bad situation, he knew that God was going to get the glory, even whether it be by life or death, he knew that God was going to get the magnification of him. Then he says something so profound and so significant. He says, for, to, for me, to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. In other words, his perspective about the bad situation he was in was a win-win situation. How do you feel about that marriage? How do you feel about that job? How do you feel about what's going on in your body? Is in your heart and mind it a win-win situation? It can be. The choice is up to you. You know, you don't have to live an unhappy life. If you're unmarried and, you know, maybe a divorce happened and, you know, things that you know, you've experienced death in a relationship or in a, in a family situation, you don't have to let that set the bar for the rest of your life. You can be happy right now. Amen. No matter the situation or circumstance, you can choose. You know, everybody, you know, people that are married, they want to have a happy marriage. But you, did you know that you can actually pay, be happy in a bad marriage? Yeah. It's a matter of choice. You don't have to be all mean and snarly, you know, you know, things are the way you want to know. That other person, they might not be doing right, they may not, things may not be connected right, but you can just be the most pleasant and wonderful person. You come in, I'm all with you. Oh, nothing. Well, I see that you're in the mood, so I'm going to just go and you. And when you go, I'm going to be here for you, baby, because you know I love you. And things, come on. That's a choice. You let somebody else's experience of death in one form or another rain on your parade, That's you chose to give up that freedom. Amen. 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 It's a matter of choice. In, in Psalm 118, stanza 17, it says, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. I've turned that around and I declare I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Can you make that same declaration? My sister-in-law, um, literally, I mean, she's a young woman, probably around her early 30s. This past week, life-threatening symptoms, loss of consciousness for days, fever over 104. Or thereabouts. Low blood pressure, dealing with a toxic shock syndrome. One hospital told her, if she stays, told the family, if she stays here, she will die. They had to life flight her to a, a better hospital. Her family began to send out the prayer requests. Friends are gathered together. Faith family church is praying. And you know what we're declaring? That she shall live and not die. And declare the works of the Lord. What 
you choose when you face death in any manner of its ramifications is up to you. It's not just to fail. This situation could have turned out real bad. But we say not so. Why? I said before you, life and death, blessing and curse. You choose what kind of life you want to live. One of the difficulties is we don't understand the ramifications of that. We almost listen to this message, and we need to be careful not to listen to this message. Like Adam and Eve listened to God when he said, the day that you eat of this, you will surely die. In the book of Genesis, chapter 2, and verse number 17, well, I skipped two, but we'll go there. In Genesis, chapter 2, and verse number 17, the Bible says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. Why well, would you imagine them hearing that? They don't even know what death is like. They don't know what bad is, bad is like. They don't know what evil is like. They are the first human beings that ever walked the planet. Everything was designed to live. Death wasn't even in the planet at that time. Romans chapter 5 verse 12 told us, uh, for, as, for as by one man death entered into the world and death by sin because that all... I'll just wait till we get it. Amen. I'm sorry, I'm stuttering. I know this is my heart. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all have sinned. That one man that they're referring to in, in Romans 5 and 12, that's Adam. How did bad things get into this world? Because of one man's sin. He opened up the door to sin. And when sin entered into the world, death came into the world. And, and I don't know if we really understand what death coming into the world really looks like. Because they didn't understand what death looked like. I mean, for her, she took that fruit. When she saw that it was good, you know, you ever had a bad piece of fruit? Come on, you know it. You can see it from the outside. You can smell it as a little, you know, an improper, you don't need that, right? But when Eve saw that the fruit was good and it, and it was good to be eaten, it was pleasant to the eye, and it was something that needed to be desired, she partook of it. Partly because she didn't understand what God said about living and dying, about life and death. Oh, I'm preaching good right now. Come on, watch this. So she partook of it because she didn't understand what I'm talking to you about, the choice between life and death. When she saw that she wasn't going to die. I mean, think about it. Think about that. What if Eve would have partook of this fruit? <laughs> I will fall out. I don't feel like doing that. <laughs> but what if she would have, her eyes run up, <clears throat> and boom, fall out, right? Do you think Adam would have been like, boom, <laughs> and then pick up that fruit? Like, well, no. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> I'd be like, God, can you give me another wife? But this will make us smart. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing inevitably on the outside changed. So much so that he then took of the fruit also and did eat. And then they heard God coming. They didn't understand death. Don't be in that same category. What are you talking about? They lived to be like a thousand years old. But what God said was true, that in the day that you eat it, in the day that you eat it, you will surely die, but they kept living. Or did they? See, this is spiritual, not natural. That day, they died spiritually. And when they died spiritually, all the ramifications of death yeah. entered in. Sickness and disease is actually, is actually a ramification of death. Sometimes even the semblance of sicknesses can lead to death. If there wasn't a fight in the body, if the immune, come on, if the immune system didn't fight a cold, a cold could kill you. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, preaching good. All forms of sickness and disease and injury ultimately could lead to death if it weren't for the presence of life. Amen. Amen. All of death came as a result of sin. So when you have life and death set before you, don't think just not living in an old age and then dying. No, think financial lack. That's a choice. You don't have to be broke for the rest of your life. You don't have to be in a, in a job that you don't like for the rest of your life. You don't have to be in a bad way for the rest of your life. You've got a choice. And what he's saying is you've got to make the right choice. And don't do like so many do. They look at the circumstance that they're in and they think that this is the only way out. And they choose the door of death. Quitting is the death of a dream. Just like divorce is the death of a marriage. So how do you choose life instead of death? This is where I'm going to pick up the next time. Because the choice is absolutely up to you. In Proverbs chapter 18 and verse number 20, it says, A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth, and from the produce of his lips he shall be filled. Did you know that your mouth has fruit and produce? Go back to verse 20. I'm going to make sure I, I connect. A man's stomach, what you consume, will be satisfied by the fruit of your mouth and from the produce of your lips. Did you know that your mouth has fruit and produce? And what you experience in this life, all right, forget the music, y'all. Focus on me. <laughs> What you experience in life is a direct result of what comes out of your mouth. I mean, think about it. If God, at the beginning of time, stepped out over the bowels of heaven and said, man, it's dark out here. It still be dark to this day. But rather than speaking of what he saw, he said, light be. And it still is. Man's stomach shall be satisfied by the fruit of his mouth. By the produce of his lips he shall be filled. Look at the next verse. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruits. Child of God, I'm here to tell you. The choice is up to you. And the way you choose. And I'm going to talk about this. You don't want to miss this. The way you choose life over death is going to come down to what comes out of your mouth. When you get that doctor's report, come on. When you get that layoff notice, come on. When some bad thing happens in a relationship and all the signs and signals tell you to run and to leave, the choice is going to be up to you. For Abraham, it seems like it was an easy choice. He did not consider his own body, which was dead. He was dealing with physical death in his body. Neither did he consider the deadness of Sarah's womb, but was strong in faith. He knew that this situation was going to turn out not the way it looks like right now, but the way that God declared it from the beginning. In the same way, when you're faced with situations that are bad and bleak, speak words of life. Amen. Don't speak death. Yes. And you'll see things turn yes. into victory. Amen. 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 In golf, uh, they use a tee to start the next hole. We're, the, we're, we're right at the next hole. And this has just teed us up. You don't want to miss the next part of this message. Because now that you know that in life, it's a matter of choice. It's not automatic. You get to choose. 
Now you need to learn how do you make that choice? What does the word of God have to say? With you? Amen. Bow your heads with me. Maybe you're here today and you're in a bad situation. And you're facing situations.